this video, I want to introduce to you Liquid Pin. Liquid Pin allows you to pin processes and threads to specific cores. It directly supports pthreads and OpenMP. No code changes are required to use it. It supports logical IDs within topological entities. To use it, your binary needs to be dynamically linked. Liquid is designed for pinning to dedicated resources. Other strategies for managing thread affinity are not directly supported. Liquid Pin is used as a wrapper to your application. In the simplest case, you just provide a list of physical IDs to determine where the threads are running. The real benefit of using Liquid Pin comes by using the logical numberings. For this, we need to introduce some Liquid terminology and syntax. Liquid has so called threat domains. A threat domain is a topological entity that is shared by a certain number of hardware threads. A threat domain is defined by a single character plus an index. For example, here S0 stands for socket 0. A threat group is then a number of threads that run within a threat domain. A threat group expression can consist of ranges or lists of IDs. Multiple thread group expressions may be chained using the add character. A thread group expression specifies the mapping of the threads to hardware threads using logical numberings within the thread domain. Here you see an example where four threads are pinned to dedicated cores. As you can see, if you use the thread group syntax, the numbering is physical cores first. So in this example, with four cores, the IDs 0 to 3 is the first hardware thread of each core, so the physical core, and the IDs 4 to 7 are then the second hardware thread on the cores. To illustrate which thread domains are currently supported, we look at an artificial node architecture. So this node consists of two sockets. Every socket has two dies with a memory channel each. Within the die, there are two cores having two SMT threads each with sh two cores sharing a last level cache. The first thread domain is the complete node. This is the default if you don't specify any command line argument to liquid pin. Next is S for socket, M for memory domain and C for outer level cache group. The beauty of this syntax is that if a new topology exists, we can just add another character without breaking the basic syntax. Liquid supports also an alternative syntax, which is called the expression syntax. The expression syntax generates a thread group from a number of threads within a thread domain. So you don't have an explicit list, but the list is generated. In contrast to the thread group syntax, the expression syntax uses compact placement. So the threads are consecutively placed to adjacent hardware threads. To use the expression syntax, you have to start with an E for expression syntax, then a colon, then you specify the thread domain here in this example, again, socket zero, another colon, and the number of threads you want to use. That's the required part. There is an optional part where after another colon, you specify the chunk size and an optional stride. The expression syntax is, for example, useful if you want to use a subset of hardware threads on a subset of cores. This is very difficult to do in the thread group syntax if you have a large number of cores. It may also be more convenient to use in, for example, benchmarking scripts, where you just specify the number of threads to use. Here you see the previous example, but now using the expression syntax. If you want to use just the physical cores, so only the first hardware thread on each core, you have to provide a chunk size on stride and stride. So in this example, the chunk size is one and then the stride. So the distance between two threads is two. I want to show you the usage of liquid pin in a small demo. In this demo, I will use a benchmark that is available on our GitHub account. This benchmark is called the bandwidth benchmark. It is inspired by McAlpin's stream benchmark and contains a collection of streaming kernels. If you're interested in this benchmark, I will put the link in the info box. The first thing you should try is the dash H command line option. This will output the supported command line options and some detailed examples how to use liquid pin. Usually we only need the dash C command line option. Other useful options are 
the dash P option that prints all available thread domains and the dash Q option that suppresses the output. Lesser known options are the dash I command line option that enables interleaved page placement on a NUMA system and the dash capital S option that will sweep memory and last level cache to have a clean state before benchmarking. Before pinning, it is recommended to call liquid topology to see how the node looks like. In this demo, we're using an Intel Broadwell based system with cluster on die mode enabled. So as you can see, the system has four NUMA domains. The bandwidth benchmark is threaded using OpenMP. And the first thing we want to try is to just call it without any other settings. As you can see, per default, as many threads as are, there are hardware threads in the system, so on the node, are used. In this case, 72 threads. As you can see, the benchmark outputs the result for the various different streaming kernels. For the sake of this demo, we will look on one specific case, that is the triad kernel. The first thing we want to try is to use a liquid pin to run the bandwidth benchmark in sequential mode, so only using one thread. As mentioned, one advantage of using liquid pin is that the pinning expression also implicitly sets the number of threads, so sets the environment variable OMP num threads in case of an OpenMP threaded application. We use here logical pinning, so we pin the one thread or the process to core zero on socket zero. The liquid pin output is in blue here, so as you can see, when you start your application, initially at the start the process is pinned and that's it in this case and then comes the output of your program. Please be aware that the liquid pin output always uses physical hardware thread IDs. So here core zero is really also the processor zero in the operating system context. The bandwidth benchmark also outputs the number of threads used here. If your application does not do output the number of threads, this is another benefit because liquid pin outputs or gives you some feedback how many threads are used. So in this demo, the actual performance number is not important. So I will not discuss why the performance is how it is or why different kernels uh, show different performance numbers, in this case bandwidths. Uh, this is the topic of another video. But still, let's remember for the moment that with, with one thread we get around 9 gigabyte bandwidth. So let's assume that we want to see how well the bandwidth scales within the memory domain. Um, for this purpose, the socket domain is not the correct one because here on this architecture, one socket actually has two memory domains. So the, rock, the correct thread domain we want to use is capital M for memory domain. For the sake of completeness, just repeat this with M0, 0. Of course, we now expect this to show the same pinning behavior and the same performance. So the output is as, as expected identical to the one using um, socket zero. So now let's scale out and um, do the second run with using two threads. So M0 um, with the thread expression zero to one. Now the output changes a bit. You, you have now the process main is pinned to core zero and then the first thread is pinned to core one. If you ask yourself what this skip mask is all about, this is in cases where the runtime uses a thread for itself. You don't want to pin this thread and therefore there's the skip mask which indicates that some of the created threads are not pinned, yeah? so are skipped. So now we can just go on and use four threads, so M0 and then thread expression 0, 2, 3. As you can see, Again, for our triad kernel, there is some scalability, but it's not perfect. So we get some increase in performance when using more threads, but it's not linear. So next, using now six threads from zero to five. And as you can see, um, the memory bandwidth of the triad kernel actually does not scale much more. Yeah? So it seems to be reaching saturation. So finally, using all physical cores in the memory domain, so nine cores, and again, as you can see, the triad bandwidth is in saturation, so you don't 
get better performance when using more threads, in this case for this memory bandwidth limited kernel. Now to demonstrate the round drop-in feature of the thread expression syntax, we just now use index 0 to 9. And as you can see in the output, the first nine threads are from 0 to core 8. And then the ninth thread is on core 36. If you remember the output of Liquid Topology, you know that the SMT threads or the hardware threads, the second hardware thread is numbered round robin. So the, the second hardware thread of the first core is uh, has the ID 36. This means that now two threads are running on the first core, whereas all the other threads have their dedicated core. Of course, this is not ideal for performance because those two threads compete for resources and therefore, as you can see, the performance slightly decreased to around 2021 20, gigabytes per second. Now, let's see what happens if you actually specify OMPNUM threads in your environment. So we're using env and set OMPNUM threads equals four, but we don't touch the rest of this um, thread expression. And as you can see, Liquid Pin will acknowledge that OMPNUM threads is already set and will use as many threads as are specified with OMPNUM threads. So in this case, four threads. You may use this way to also scale out you, you set a, a fixed pinning expression and you just increase the OMP num threads uh, variable. That's also an option. Now let's check out some useful options. And the first option that uh, is quite interesting is liquid pin dash P. This prints out all available thread domains and the physical hardware thread IDs that belong to each of those thread domains. And as you can see, as we already discussed on this architecture, the memory domains are equivalent to the last level cache domains, but are not equivalent to the socket domains. So there are two memory domains per socket domain. So next, just run the benchmark using all physical cores on the node. So specify the dash, uh, specify the capital N for node, and then the IDs 0 to 36. So as you can see, because there is one line per thread output from liquid pin, this is quite a bunch of output. And because this output occurs when you enter the first parallel region in your code, it might happen that the other output of your program that was before this first parallel region scrolls out of the terminal window. While it's nice to have some feedback, how many threads are actually running for benchmarking, maybe you don't want to fill up your output with liquid pin messages. And for this, uh, there is the option dash Q. Dash Q um, suppresses all liquid pin output, as you can see here. So next we want to use two memory domains. And um, for the sake of the, this demo, we want to use two memory domains that are not on the same socket. And you can use this with the add symbol. So here, for example, we are using um, six threads on memory domain zero and another six threads on memory domain two, which is located on the other socket. That was it for the thread group syntax. And next I want to show you some examples using the expression-based syntax. The expression-based syntax is indicated by a capital E at the beginning. And then you have two required um, parameters. The first is the thread domain in which you want to place the threads, in this case, the memory domain zero, and then the number of threads you want to use. So in this case, four. As you can see at the output, this is the major difference between the two syntax forms. In this case here, using the expression-based syntax, the pinning is compact. So as you can see, the threads are placed consecutive on the hardware threads. So the process runs on core zero and then the first thread runs on the second hardware thread of core zero, so core 36. This is actually a bit disturbing that, this, uh, that in the output they are all called cores. And the same for the last two threads. So they, they're running consecutively on uh, core one. This means 
if you want to use physical cores only, so only run one thread per core, you have to specify two additional parameters to the expression syntax. And um, this is the chunk size and the offset. So on typical Intel or AMD processors, which usually have two hardware threads per physical core, you need one as chunk size and two as offset to only use one thread per physical core. And as you can see, using this expression produces the same output as using the thread group syntax. Yeah, so the four threads run on four dedicated cores. Of course, you can also chain the expression-based syntax. So the same rules apply as for the thread group syntax. So last, I want to show you a not that well-known option. And that this is the dash capital S option. This option is useful for benchmarking if you want to initialize the memory hierarchy in a well-defined clean state. So it, so to say, cleans the last level cache. Depending on the size of your last level cache, this might take some time, but it's worth to give it a try. When you have a benchmark that is sensitive to cache performance, it might give a difference in performance. I hope this video was useful to you. If you have any questions, you can contact us at the Liquid User mailing list. You can find the contact information in the info box.